So apparently what I'm doing here is absolutely not allowed. Um, here's my car and um, there's a plug. And I'm charging my car using just the same sort of plug you would uh, charging your cell phone, literally just the same plug. And apparently this isn't allowed. So this is uh, the car plugged into the same old kind of plug you would plug your appliance into or your cell phone. And this is the sort of charge rate you're getting, four kilometers per hour. Um, I had this car charged, being charging for almost 24 hours and I've put in 114 kilometers, which, you know what, isn't so bad. In a car like this, I'm pretty happy with that. But until my condo building uh, allows me to hook up a charger, I don't have very many options. Uh, this parking lot is attached to my condo building, so I can, if I find a socket, I can plug in and the car will charge overnight. I'm probably not allowed to do this. Uh, it's probably technically not allowed anyway. Uh, but so far, nobody's really yelled at me. But, uh, you know, some days you just, you just need energy. Uh, I'm happy to pay for it. I'd love to pay for it. Like, give me an ability to pay for it. But um, condo buildings in Toronto have been moving very slowly to adapt to um, drivers um, having electric cars. Uh, but let's look at Toronto and let's look at what other charging options are in Toronto because you would figure a metropolitan city with lots and lots of stuff to do uh, around here, you'd figure there'd be a lot of great, great affordable options to charge. Um, but there's not many. And in fact, uh, parking in Toronto is already expensive. So there's not where you can really drive by and plug in the car. Now look, I'd actually argue that charging in Toronto has gotten worse, not better. And uh, not because of the lack of planning. Uh, see, in some ways, charging in Toronto was better when I first uh, started driving an electric vehicle car uh, last summer because one of the main companies that did the install, KSI, wasn't, I would say, the most competent company in the world. I, I don't know anything about them, I really don't, but a lot of their installs didn't seem to go well. And what they ended up doing is for those installs, they ended up making that charging free. I'll give you an example. We're going to a location here at, uh, under a YMCA parking lot, and it's uh, a Cooper's Coup on the east end of Toronto, uh, just before the DVP. And uh, this spot here uh, is a great location. I used to go here all the time. There's a coffee shop, and I used to drink co coffee at the coffee shop, and I used to charge the car. Now, originally when KSI installed the charger, um, there was no cell reception, so there was no way to activate the charging. There was no way for them to activate you and there's there was no way to really get the charge going. So for the first little while, um, I had a Chatamo charger here that was absolutely free. Now that was wonderful. The problem was there was only one charger and it could only reach two spots. Yeah, it's a bit of a tight pull. So this Chatamo charger was really affordable and very nice. But it had one problem. It, this parking lot does not discriminate for EV and non-EV chargers. So these two chargers here, it's actually just one charger, but you can reach from two parking spots. Uh, it's listed for the YMCA facility, so there's no limitations here. Any car can park here. And most of the time you come here, you will not see an EV car parked. Uh, so here's a good charter mode charger. It costs five dollars to start and twenty cents a minute, which isn't cheap. Uh, plus, you're paying seven or so dollars for parking. But this charger is almost never available. And, and no, that will not stretch to my car. I've tried; it just doesn't work. And same with these chargers here. Nothing. Uh, Toronto has uh, a couple of challenges with public charging, which I, which are unavoidable. The first is. Parking is expensive. I mean, you can park here for about $10 an hour is about the average price. You can sometimes find parking spots out of the main district that are cheaper, like the one we just went to. Uh, you can park there for 7 to $10 all day. Uh, but that's really, you know, this is really kind of outside of the downtown core. If you want parking in downtown core, it's going to cost you at least $10 an hour or maybe $40, $50 for the day. So, I mean, level two charging is, is nice, but I mean, if it takes you eight hours to charge a car, uh, you're paying 40, 50 bucks for that charge. Uh, plus whatever the charging unit charges you, which, you know, level two is a lot of times is, is cheap or free. Uh, Chatamo is certainly much more expensive. So that's unavoidable. Parking in Toronto is expensive. You, EV owners can't expect parking to be free. And that is a given. The, the problem is Toronto is filled with condos. We have so many t condos. Our, this development over here to the right, it's going to be a condo building. There's two more down the street. They're going to be condo buildings. Uh, we have so many condos in the city and condo boards are not at all obligated at this point to 
uh, provide you with a charge port, um, even if you're willing to pay for it. And that's that's my case. I mean, I'm happy to pay for one. Just just allow me to pay for a charge port. I don't have that option. So with parking being expensive and with EV charging being expensive uh, and not being able to charge at home and many for many of us live in downtown Toronto, uh, there just doesn't seem to be a long-term vision uh, for charging. Now, new condos being built, there is a rule that says if you're a new condo, you know, 20% of your parking spots must be ready to go for EV charging. And that's wonderful. Uh, you know, one of the biggest problems with creating new charging spots at a condo building is you need to draw more power. And that usually means bringing in more transformers and more power lines, part of the building in the garage where there's not as much um, power required. So that's fair. Um, that needs to be done and that's wonderful. That's a great step. But uh, that's really not going to resolve an EV problem. That means, you know, I'm I'm kind of willing to, because I have a f flexible schedule, I can go to a coffee shop and I can charge the car. I don't even mind going up to a Tesla dealership, worst comes to worst, and charging the car there. I'm comfortable with doing that because that fits into my lifestyle, but that won't work for most. <laughs> The other problem here is uh, if you are in desperate need of a charge, uh, there it, it gets really tough downtown. Um, you know, you can go into a parking lot, but you're not guaranteed the parking spot is available. So a good example is the place uh, Cooper Coo where we were. Uh, that KCI charger, if I looked up on the app, it'll tell me whether or not that charger is free. And of course, with the guard blocking it, it says it's free. There's been a number of instances where I needed to charge and there's a Chatham charger nearby. Uh, and I drove to the parking lot, paid for the parking spot, drove in and could not charge because the car was blocked. Um, again, some of these parking lot spots are clearly marked EV only and, and drivers certainly need, need, need to be educated not to park there. One of the arguments I hear all the time is, uh, aren't you wasting a lot of time charging your car uh, versus gas cars, which you can fill up in a, f you know, a few minutes? And the truth is, no, you don't. Uh, if you have a charger at night, you never fill up your car. You literally park the car, you plug it in, and the car's at full or at 90% or however full you want the tank to be, uh, it is full. Uh, to the where you need it at the end of the uh, by morning. So charging the car isn't really a problem. It slows you down on road trips. I mean, certainly if you do road trips, you know, half your driving, then sure, that that's certainly a concern. But day-to-day um, -day driving, you never have to charge your, you never have to fill up your car ever. You don't ever have to go to the gas station. You're never stressed out in the and during the day. Oh, I didn't fill up last night, and so now I have to fill up the car some point during the day. So I mean, look, uh, EV drivers shouldn't ever have to worry about day-to-day uh, -day driving charging their car. This is just something they plug in at night. But because I don't have a charger, because I live in a condo, because my condo doesn't uh, isn't making it easy to install a charger at my place, um, I do have to drive around. I do have to find places to park that are that are cheaper. I do have to pay, pay more money for parking and for charging, and that's fine. Um, it's something I'm willing to do with, deal with, and because I am able to. But most people aren't. I mean, how many people working nine to five are going to be able to go and and find a coffee shop before going home and charging the car for 45 minutes? That's just it's an impossible ask. For electric vehicles to really take off, this problem needs to be resolved. It can't just be the new condos that are going up. It has to be available to all uh, Toronto dwellers. And we, we need more support. We need more uh, help to set up these chargers.